December 6, 2018, this meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'll let everyone know that we are audio and video recording these proceedings. And before we start the formal meeting, thank you, uh, we have a period of public comment. We only ask that you keep your comments to about three minutes. And remember, we don't engage in a back and forth. It's your time to give your opinion to us. So I'll start with the sign-up sheet I have, and afterwards, anyone who hasn't signed up would be welcome to speak also. The first person is Amy Meltzer. Ms. Meltzer, if you give your name. I'm buzz this time. <laughs> okay. Give you a very gentle buzz. Wait, if you give us your... There's no timer this time? Let's see, yeah, right you need to take advantage <laughs> of, our, of our laziness. You had some right. extra seconds. But go ahead and give your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Amy Meltzer, and I live at 11 Olive Street. And I came to tonight's <coughs> city council meeting uh, because I want to share something from else from what I've learned since getting involved in a project that came before the planning board last summer. And this is not about the specifics of a project, but about a way I, I'm starting to feel like the system is a little broken, and I'd like to help figure out how to fix it, and I want to describe what I've noticed. So when Northampton decided to promote density, there were a lot of concerns, I don't have to tell some of you, about projects or seven or more units. And there was a big delay, there was a moratorium, there have been um, <coughs> kind of... Uh, design standards and the highest level of screening, the special permit process. And because of the possibility that a seven unit or a larger building really has an impact that no other projects don't have. So, um, so that, that, I think all those things were great ideas for what we could anticipate. Um, but I've noticed some problems that I want to share and hope that some of you will help me figure out how I can help make a change. So I'm going to speak first from the perspective of an abutter. Uh, we have no abutters guide. Lots of cities have an abutters guide that are like two, three pages long to walk an abutter through the process. If we have one, no one ever brought it to my attention. Um, the Office of Planning and Sustainability has a really difficult to navigate website. Um, right. And no one in the office who's that excited about helping, probably because they're really busy, but there's no one in the office to actually help you find stuff who <laughs> acts like they want to help you find stuff. So, so that's a problem. Amazing, Pamela Powers has been my best friend in learning stuff. She is awesome. Um, but the office is just not set up to be that helpful to non-developers. Um, there's a timing issue, so a lot of times a project, um, things about the project don't come in until like a day or less than a week. And if you're working on the project, that's not a problem. But if you're a person who doesn't know anything about design or architecture or land use, and you have five days to prepare to come before the planning board, and then on top of that, you may know that Basically, no architects will come to the planning. They won't speak against the planning board if they think it's something that the Office of Planning and Sustainability is in favor of because it doesn't, and I get that, but th these are all things that do not work in favor of an abutter. Um, I want to add to that that I've mentioned before. Like A lot of city agencies are not speaking that highly about the growth decision. So it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence from a citizen because people in the DPW are like, eh, okay, uh, not set up for collaboration. So I wanna just throw out something really fast because I'm running out of time, which is, I'm just gonna say this, Toronto, shoot, where is it? The Toronto Design Panel. Toronto encourages collaboration. There are all these parties about a particular project who our opinions are about this much different but nobody's encouraging or helping us come together. They're setting us against each other at the planning board. And wouldn't it be awesome if Northampton showed that smart growth could happen here with the 10th principle that's about collaboration? It's not happening right now, and I would love to help see that change. I had so much more to say. Three minutes is not very long, but I'll come back in two weeks. So. Well, we appreciate that. Thank and, you. <laughs> and to you and anyone else who gives public comment, sometimes you'll have a fairly complex comment like that, and it's met with what might seem like stony silence just because of our rules, but again, you are, everyone is encouraged to follow up with their ward counselors or me or any other city department to discuss them further, okay? But thank you. So that takes care of the sign-up sheet. Is there anyone who hasn't signed up or would like to speak? Uh, Jeremy, <coughs> then we'll get everybody. Hi, everybody. Not really anything to say, but I, I want to say um, thank you to Councillor Nash. We met uh, to discuss my appointment to the Human Rights Commission. And uh, we had a, a great discussion, and I thank you for your time. Uh, and that got me onto thinking that usually I come to the context of like I'm wanting something, or I'm doing, or I'm like thinking of like yelling at you or demanding something. So I just wanted to say thank you, um, and you all work really hard, and uh, you get I get three minutes to do whatever I want in public comment. So I wanted to 
I said I had a, a, a little uh, surprise, so I wanted to read a poem. And this is by Langston Hughes. Folks, I'm telling you, birthing is hard and dying is mean. So get yourself a little loving in between. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks to Mr. Hughes. Um, let's see, anyone else? No poetry is required, prose is fine. <laughs> Please. Hi, my name is Liel. Um, I'm a current junior at Smith College. Um, I'm also a dual citizen of Israel and the US, and I just wanted to thank Mayor Narkowitz and just thank y'all for supporting um, we have a bunch of people here who are really thankful that um, y'all chose to cancel the trip um, and just wanted to show our support um, for Northampton around doing that and really, really show our appreciation. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Any, anything? No? Okay. Um, hearing none, we'll convene and start the meeting and I'd ask that the role of the council <coughs> be called, please. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Present. Councillor White. Here. Councillor Barnes. Here. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Here. Here. Okay, we have a quorum, so we are in session. Let me just make several um, announcements. First, three public hearings, all of which will take place on December 20th, 2018, uh, at approximately 7.05, right here in the council chambers, 212 Main Street. Um, the first is a poll petition from National Grid, Verizon New England, uh, for Hinckley Street. And for your reference, if you, if you are interested in, in this, um, it, uh, the number is 26535923. Um, another poll petition will be held for Prospect Street, and this is 26534766. Um, and finally, another petition will be held for Vernon Street, 26990106. Uh, all of these are being announced in accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws. Um, so there you have an announcement of public hearings for the next council. Um, let's see, announcements. Just a, a brief announcement for me. You have um, on the agenda is the appointment of the first two of um, a number of citizens to a charter review committee for next year. Uh, every 10 years, it's Northampton's uh, ambition, and so our charter requires us to look at, at the charter itself. It's sort of a mini constitutional convention in a way. And every ward counselor is um, going back to their ward and talking to people they represent and making recommendations to the mayor who will appoint a citizen from each ward. And I believe that there are two who have been or may be appointed already that we're going to deal with tonight. But whether or not your ward counselor has made a recommendation or not, or you just want to be involved in the charter review committee, uh, I wanted to make the announcement that you should speak with your ward counselor. Um, this is something that has to be very open to the public, in my opinion. It's a, it's a community-wide discussion. So just an FYI on the charter review commission that's going to be happening next year. Are there other announcements from any member of the council? Uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, just to let folks know that the legislative matters meeting of December, scheduled for December 10th has been canceled because our one agenda item has <coughs> been removed. So no. we will not be convening. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Councilor Klein and Councilor Nash. Um, I have a very uh, Ward 7 specific announcement, but I thought it was appropriate to share it tonight. Um, and specifically, it's specifically for people who um, live close to the Leeds School. On Tuesday, December 11th at 6 p.m., so that's uh, this coming Tuesday, at 6 o'clock, we're meeting in the Leeds School Cafetorium for a meeting that's sponsored by um, Sal Kanata, the principal of the school, myself and the Leeds Civic Association for neighbors to the school about school safety. Um, the school is doing some planning around what might happen if there is um, a major emergency, uh, a shooter that should um, come to the school when the kids are outside or even inside and the kids need to run. They're looking for 
neighbors in the adjacent neighborhoods who would be willing to welcome children into the school. Um, so everybody who lives close to the school is invited. <coughs> Excuse me, for um, again, Tuesday, December 11th at six o'clock in the Leeds School Cafetorium. Thanks. Thank you. Council for Ward 3. Thank you. Um, so I, first I, I'd like to, uh, so over in Ward 3 we had this little event called the NETA opening and um, I'd like to thank uh, NETA and the Northampton Police Department for all of the work that they've done to keep traffic flowing and to uh, deal with all of the, the parking congestion that has gone on. Um, it's, it, you know, there's been, there was the other shop that opened in a much smaller town and they had to have a, uh, uh, convene their, uh, their town meeting to address the, the traffic issues. We haven't had to do that here. Um, I, I do field some reports of, you know, parking on specific streets and I am in discussion with the mayor about alleviating some of that, but, um, and I'd also like to thank everybody in the city for putting up with what could have been a real bottleneck um, that um, it's, we, it's been a major event. It's been a, uh, there's been a lot of people coming to Pleasant Street and Con Street and um, we've done a really great job. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Council Barge. Yes. Um, I just want to announce on December 10th at Ryan Road School, 6 o'clock p.m. in the cafeteria, we are starting, the Human Rights Commission is starting International Human Rights Day. So everybody in Ward 6 or even throughout the city because it's going to happen in every ward throughout the whole week. So they're invited to attend any ward. Thank you, Councilor. Any other, are we at uh, Councilor Bidwell and Councilor Carney? Just to expand on, on Councilor Labarge's message, I wanted to, because there has been relatively little attention and publicity about this. In, in fact, it's a whole, as you indicated, a whole series of community conversations in acknowledgement of the 70th anniversary of the signing of the uh, uh, International uh, Declaration of Human Rights. So on, and I'm just going to read these out real quickly because there has not been a lot of attention to them. These are community conversations on the subject of human rights issues in Northampton. And as indicated, on Monday, Ward 6 will be in Ryan Road School at 6 o'clock. And also on Monday, Ward 1 will have such a conversation at Jackson Street School at 7 o'clock. On Tuesday, Ward 2 will have its conversation at the YMCA at 7.30. On Wednesday, Ward 3 will have a conversation at the Senior Center at 7 o'clock. On Thursday, Ward 4 will have a conversation at the Senior Center at 6 o'clock. And back on Tuesday, again, the 11th, Wards 5 and 7 will meet jointly at the Florence Civic Center at 6.30. So uh, all of these are uh, facilitated by Northampton Connects in cooperation with the Human Rights Commission and with all of us as ward counselors. And uh, we're encouraging people to come to these conversations. Thank you. Councilor Carney. Oh, I only meant to announce the Ward 1 meeting for on December 10th also, as Councilor Barge noticed. Um, December 10th, 7 o'clock, Jackson Street School. Thank you very much. Uh, any other council announcements? Um, I just want to make sure I sort of summarize those three poll petition announcements. So I want to make sure I'm saying the magic words and make clear that those three streets, uh, we're talking about poll petitions, uh, which are on the petition of National Grid, Verizon, New England, to erect poles and wires upon, along, or under, or across one or more public ways. Um, good. So, Mr. Mayor, do you have any no communications? Okay. Uh, so, we can move swiftly along to the consent agenda. And I'll read the items. If any councilor wishes to remove one, um, say so, and we'll vote on it separately. <coughs> First is the question of approving the minutes of November 15th, 2018. Next are three appointments. All of these appointments have received positive recommendations from the Committee on City Services. So a vote on the consent agenda will be the equivalent of appointing these people. To the Conservation Commission, Randy Kratowski of 171 Emerson Way in Florence. To the Housing Partnership, Alexander Jarrett of 8 High Street in Florence. To the Human Rights Commission, Jeremy Whalen 
of 31 Union Street in Northampton. Next is the question of the approval of a secondhand dealer license application, Cumberland Rare Books. Uh, it's a petition for an annual license for a secondhand dealer uh, at 9 and a half Market Street, Suite 3A. The applicant is, um, I'll, miss, I'll say the name wrong, Hosea T. Baskin of 46 Franklin Street in Northampton. Um, the next is the appointment to, of two people to the Charter Review Committee, and this is for referral to the Committee on City Services for review. Those two people are <coughs> Robert, last name, Councillor? Bo Bolris? You, uh, you suggested him, so I thought mm -hmm. I would ask you. Robert Bolris of 127 <laughs> Hinkley Street and um, Sam Hopper of 257 South Street for Ward 5 and 4. Move so that's approval the approval of the consent agenda. Move to second it. Okay, no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? Thank you very much. That was a hefty consent agenda. I'm glad we could all agree on its contents. So we'll um, recess and turn it over to the Finance Committee. Thank you. Would you read the roll of the Here. Present. Great. Our first uh, item of business is to approve <coughs> the minutes of November 15th, 2018. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And now we have a number of financial orders. Since uh, our free cash was approved, we need to allocate it to different stabilization funds. Uh, so we're going to start off <coughs> with order 18207, and it's order that one. Point four million dollars be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance, uh, which is also free cash, to the following accounts. $700,000 to the capital stabilization fund and $700,000 to uh, the regular stabilization fund. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. All right. Second. And the mayor is here to uh, talk about it. Yeah, so as counselors know, um, every uh, year that we close out a fiscal year case the FY18 fiscal year budget um, we go through a whole process uh, whereby uh, for the next several months after it closes on June 30th uh, we have to work with um, the Department of Revenue and uh, and close out all of our various grant funds and all and verify what revenues uh, we received versus what was budgeted and any other um, unanticipated revenues that come in um, they then certify that um, and uh, typically happens uh, at the end of the, of the near the end of the calendar year. Um, and so this year they certified our undesignated uh, fund balance or free cash as it's um, uh, sometimes called. I don't know who came up with that. It was uh, sort of an, not a great name. Um, but, uh, but so basically the, um, the balance that was certified this year for Northampton uh, was 4.2 uh, million. Um, which is actually similar to last year and the year prior. Um, and so, uh, as is our custom, we then will um, allocate some of it to our various um, stabilization uh, funds. Um, we'll also be allocating a large portion of it to the uh, capital improvement uh, program that we do every year, um, as well as um, you'll see some other orders, sort of housekeeping orders, where we'll be um, <coughs> appropriating some of it back to the school system, um, and as well as um, having it on reserve for uh, other unanticipated um, issues, including snow and ice, uh, depending <coughs> on what our snow um, and ice budget looks like <coughs> as we go through the winter. Um, so that's, uh, that's what this next series of, of orders uh, refers to. Any questions for the mayor on the funds to the two stabilizations? No? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the next is 18208, and it's an order <coughs> appropriate enterprise funds, a fund retained earnings to various capital projects. Order that $650,000 be appropriated from the <coughs> FY19 Water Enterprise Retained Earnings Fund uh, for engineering design associated with upgrades <coughs> to the Ryan 
and West Waitley Reservoirs, 700,000 be appropriated from the FY19 Sewer Enterprise Retained Earnings Fund for engineering and design associated with the plant upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant and pumping stations, and $150,000 be appropriated from the FY19 <coughs> Solid Waste Enterprise Retained Earnings Fund for ongoing landfill closure expenses. Do we have a motion finance? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Questions on this? So at the same time that the um, Department of Revenue certifies the um, undesignated fund balance or free cash for the general fund, they do a similar process for each of the enterprise funds. Um, they, it's actually, they call it retained earnings, but it's the same thing, free cash. Um, and so what we want to do is, um, because of some major capital uh, design work uh, that we need to work on, we want to go ahead and get uh, have that program toward those design projects. And some of these are large projects that are um, part of our capital improvement program that we need to, we really want to get um, moving with design. The first one, the 650, um, is actually we received back in October, uh, you may have read um, a story about it in the Gazette, um, that we received a $250,000 uh, grant from the Massachusetts Office of Energy and Environmental Repair, uh, Affairs um, to do work on our uh, spillways at the Ryan Reservoir and the West Waitley Reservoir dams. Um, the 250 was a portion of what the design uh, costs we anticipate them being. The 650 <coughs> would provide the other uh, balance of that design work. Um, so that's what that specific project is. And that's to, um, there's more detail about it in the capital improvement uh, <coughs> program, but those are the spillways um, that uh, need to be um, repaired and in some cases upgraded um, to be able to function properly um, at those two uh, reservoirs. The next one is similar process taking money from the uh, sewer enterprise uh, retained earnings, um, and it is to begin the engineering and design uh, pro projects, work on projects that are part of the capital improvement program for both the wastewater treatment plant um, and um, several of our sewage pump stations around the city that um, provide assistance in areas where gravity uh, doesn't work, and so we have these pump stations. So this is also a project, part of our long-term capital projects, but we want to do the design work um, over the winter time and, and get started on it. And then finally, um, and this is one that we um, often um, come uh, uh, to the council for, uh, 150,000 from, uh, from the solid waste enterprise, um, and it's for, <coughs> basically for, for maintenance expenses related to erosion control, um, um, maintenance on the flare system, the gas flare system, and other uh, maintenance that we, even though the landfill is closed, we do have maintenance that has to be done on it. So that's, again, these are solid waste enterprise funds that we can only use on the solid waste enterprise fund. So that would be the work there. Councilor? Yes, Mayor, how long are we gonna be doing this? Uh, there's a, um, when you close the landfill, there's right. con constant monitoring of it that will forever. go on for, well, uh, I don't know if forever, but there's certainly, there's a, we're part of a regulatory process that we have to do regular maintenance on it. Um, and so we do have, that's part of the reason why we do have the reserve funds uh, for this. Um, and we also have a separate closure fund as well uh, that we have to maintain to be able to show DEP that we have sufficient funds to be able to do, you know, 20 to 30 <coughs> years out in the future of this kind of work. So, Councilor. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, how, how much was the, the, the <coughs> total retained earnings from, from the utility? Is this, this accounts for about certainly, five? Certainly. Is that the Yeah, market? so I can give you that number. Um, the um, retained earnings in the water uh, was one million eighty one thousand uh, one hundred ninety dollars um, in sewer? It was one million two hundred thirty seven nine sixty six um, in solid waste. It was six sixty one four twenty three, and in stormwater uh, it was two oh nine eight ninety two. Um, and so, uh, and we typically, especially in the in the case of the sewer, um, you know we. We do keep reserve balances, and in some cases, we build those up so that when we 
when and we're building up to some of the big projects that we're going to do where we'll use some cash to pay sort of like a, a larger down payment on the on the borrowing that we'll mm -hmm. ultimately need to do on those so um, but there are these design projects the design leading up to the projects that we use this retained earnings uh, for to be able to fund again it has to come out of sewer enterprise right. so right. yeah so this so it leaves about a, another million and a half yet to be designated it sounds like yeah well actually we're adding to uh, balances um, let me let me get to another sheet that will that will show because because we don't you know we 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 set up these um, let me find this other it's, it's this one right here right it's oh it's that one that one that one yeah okay that's the one okay yeah so the way that that works then so the um, so FY19, I just I mentioned the um, I mentioned the uh, water uh, stabilization funds. Um, so the balance that balance is the one that I gave you. The 1.95 is accurate. Um, sewer stabilization actually the retained earnings will raise that balance to 10 million dollars. Um, and again, as we know. We've got programmed on the order of <coughs> 20 to 40 plus million dollars in big projects right. at the sewer. So right. um, we've been building up those balances yep. in order to be able to do those big projects that we're now doing design on at the at the um, at the wastewater treatment plant. Solid waste is 1.5, and um, and the yeah. So those are the three biggies. What the totals are. Councilor Nash, you had a question? Yes. Um, so first of all, I, I know my neighbors down in Ward 3 are going to be happy to see that the wastewater treatment plant may get some upgrades and let's smell a little better in the future. The, the, my question has to do with the storm water pumps at that location. Is, are, is, is that covered by either of these or did we do that last year? We did that last year. There's actually a study underway right now that we right. funded in last year's capital plan. Um, glasses are falling apart um, the um, that was a study in last year's plan that is underway right now looking at the pump stations and that's under flood control uh, so that's a study that's already in the, works. in the works right now yeah to look at what the what we need to do to those um, going forward in order for them to function properly thank you any other questions on any of these enterprise funds I'm hearing none. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. The next is 18209. Um, it's an order to appropriate free cash to Northampton Public Schools for the McKinney-Vento Transportation Reimbursement, ordered that $14,492 be appropriated from the FY19 General Fund under designated fund balance to Northampton Public Schools into the transportation budget to provide the schools with reimbursement from the Commonwealth which was received by the city for the transportation of homeless students in FY18, such <coughs> reimbursement being known as a McKinty-Vento transportation reimbursement. We have a motion in finance. A motion. Second. Second. All right. Questions? This one is fairly standard, the way the reimbursement works for the McKinney-Vento program, which is to reimburse um, uh, the school district when it has to transport homeless um, youth back and forth to their school district. Um, it comes at a time that it, it basically has to flow to us as free cash. So what we, our tradition has been, then we then appropriate it back to the school department. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what we do, are doing with this order. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Labarge. Yes, Mayor, how many <laughs> students are we talking about? Um, I would have to get that information for you. Yeah, I don't have that information. Um, I can get that for you though, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? the mayor on this one hearing none all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed um, the next one is very similar 18 to 10 in order to appropriate free cash to Northampton Public Schools for their circuit breaker reimbursement order that six thousand nine hundred thirty seven dollars <coughs> be appropriated from the FY 19 general fund undesignated fund balance to Northampton Public Schools into the special education tuition budget to provide the North the schools with the circuit breaker funds that exceeded allowable carryover thresholds at the close of fiscal year 2018. We have a motion in place. Second? Second. This was not quite as common, but it's a similar, similar situation where 
uh, the school department did not expend all of its circuit breaker funds up to a certain limit um, by the close of the fiscal year. So it got sort of pushed into our free cash, but we obviously want to give it back to the school department. Um, and uh, circuit breaker funds are a program that allows for extraordinary um, special education expenses. Um, the idea being that once you trip a, you know, three times the average for a student, that there's a reimburse, there's a fund from the state that helps, um, helps buffer that uh, for communities. Unfortunately, it's not always fully funded uh, by the <laughs> legislature, but obviously we want them to have this, this money back for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Questions on this one? Uh, hearing no questions, and all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the next is 18 to 11. It's an order to appropriate host community fees to the Health Department for Emergency Preparedness Activities. Whereas the Health Department is a recipient of grants for public health emergency preparedness, which provides services to regional groups of communities in Hampshire County for which the city has received a host community fee of $15,964. And whereas the health <coughs> department wishes to carry out additional emergency preparedness activities specifically for the benefit of the city of Northampton and, is re and its residents, which are not covered by the grant. And whereas the additional activities to be undertaken by the health department are in essence being funded by the host community fee, order that $15,964 be appropriated from the FY19 general fund undesignated fund balance to the following line items in the health department budget. $8,700 to permanent salaries, $2,764 to supplies, $4,200 to training and seminars, and $300 for travel. Do we have a motion of finance? A motion. Second? Second. The order is fairly self-explanatory, but Northampton is the lead community in this uh, regional public um, health emergency preparedness uh, group for the county. And again, uh, as it says, this is a host community uh, fee that we collect as part of leading that. Um, and our health uh, director, uh, Meredith O'Leary, uh, wants to be able to allocate that fee into um, Northampton specific uh, public health activity. So that's, you basically see that it's being allocated across her, um, hel our health department budget. Mm -hmm. uh, questions for the mayor on this order? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And the last one is 18212 in order to borrow $2.5 million for paving. Order that the sum of $2,500,000 is appropriated to pay the costs of roadway engineering design recon and reconstruction, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto. And to meet such appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow uh, such under Mass General Law Section 44, subsection 7 1, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project, any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of the um, issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, hereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs uh, by like amount. Do we have a motion in finance on this one? Motion. Second. This is my favorite order of the evening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mine too. Um, I've been going in time for the holidays. Um, so as you know, and I'm actually passing out a chart um, for you just to be a little bit illustrative. As you know, um, we've been uh, making a significant um, effort over the last five to six years to increase our efforts to repair our roadways in the city and to catch up on deferred maintenance. Um, <laughs> As some of you may recall, in, in um, previous uh, uh, capital improvement uh, plan, plans beginning in 2015, uh, the city began actually contributing general fund dollars to what had previously been just a reliance on state <laughs> chapter 90 dollars. Um, so we had in the year, fiscal years of 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018, um, as well as this current fiscal year of 20, uh, actually 2018, um, we had, just those four years, we had allocated 500,000 um, in our capital program to paving, again, to try to supplement Chapter 90 dollars. Last year, as part of the capital improvement uh, 
program and then the request that we made um, for actual capital spending, borrowing, we tripled that to $1.5 million. Um, and that's that spike you see um, in 2019. Um, and so uh, that was uh, last year. This year, we typically would come forward for this order a little bit um, earlier, well, sort of earlier in next year. Um, but because we have some projects that we want to get out to bid this winter um, and get contracts going this winter so we can get favorable pricing, we're coming earlier. And not only are we coming earlier, but I'm also proposing that we increase it an additional million dollars for next year from 1.5 million to 2.5 million um, <coughs> in order to, again, be able to address um, some major uh, roadways uh, that we want to try to tackle. Um, uh, um, the immediate one that we want to be able to go out to bid on um, is Burt's Pit Road, which is one that we've been working on the design and the engineering and the um, drainage work over the last year. Um, including right into winter time, um, and uh, and so that's that's one that we want to actually get out to bid um, next week. Um, and in order to sign a contract, ultimately we have to have a funding source or funding approval in place. So and we, we think that by going out in the over winter time, as opposed to waiting till April or May or June, that we're going to get um, much more uh, favorable, hopefully much more favorable um, bid responses. Um, but I thought I would just quickly, just to give you an understanding of the context, just sort of talk about the projects we finished this year. Um, some of them are multi-year projects, but we've been doing a significant amount of paving, and not just paving, but also um, uh, related utility work. So Hinkley Street, for example, we just finished this year. Um, that was a full depth reconstruction uh, spanning multiple fiscal years. It included sidewalks, curbing, uh, water, sewage, <laughs> drainage replacement, a new drainage outfall, an access road near the Mill River, um, and then a raised crosswalk was installed across Nonatuck Street at Hinkley Street. That project is complete. Um, and just to give people an understanding, uh, you know, when, because I know often we talk about we're doing paving this year, um, and these are the streets we're going to be able to do. People are sometimes not fully satisfied because they would expect that we'd be able to do, you know, tons and tons of streets. So the Hinkley Street project, all said and done, uh, was three million seventy-five thousand two hundred and forty-seven dollars, and that included uh, design and engineering and uh, and all of the other utility work that I mentioned. Um, Audubon Road. Uh, we reclaimed Audubon Road from Reservoir Road uh, to a point 2,580 feet northeasterly. This included drainage, uh, replacement of the con concrete culverts, and the installation of approximately 3,000 linear feet of water main and service connections. Uh, that project has now been completed. Uh, that cost uh, $1,021,683, um, and engineering costs were about $142,000. Uh, Day Avenue, um, which was another one of those that spanned a couple of different construction se uh, seasons. The pavement was reclaimed uh, between North Street and Bridge Street. Um, the project included replacement of the water and sewer mains, drainage improvements, new curbing, and asphalt sidewalks. That project is now completed this year. Engineering and constru construction costs were approximately $750,000. Um, and then uh, projects that we um, began and believe will be completing as part of FY 2019 um, funding that you approved. Um, we did crack sealing on uh, a long list of uh, streets, um, West Farms Road, Bavery Lane, Lady Slipper Lane, Sylvester Road, Kennedy Road, Reservoir Road, Ryan Road, Audubon Road, Chesterfield Road, um, all told about 8.1 miles of uh, crack sealing. Um, and that's in order to seal cracks so that we can make the, the uh, roadway uh, last longer. Um, that was about $50,000 of crack sealing. Uh, Chesterfield Road, we reclaimed the pavement between Spring St Street and Shepherd's Hollow. Uh, this project also included replacement of the water line and drainage improvements, including a 30-inch culvert and head walls. Uh, this was a $633,000 project. Pleasant Street. Um, as many of you know, we did a lot of work on sidewalks and streetscape 
last year, um, but were unable to put the finished coat of paving on Pleasant Street. So Pleasant Street was milled and paved between Main Street and Hockenham Road. Other work included improved handicap ramps, curb bump outs across from Pearl Street, new pedestrian signage and improved crosswalk. Um, the street has been uh, repaved. Um, there's still some striping and other punch list items that may have to wait to the spring <coughs> because of the early onset of winter. Um, Hampton Avenue. Uh, the pavement was reclaimed on Hampton Avenue between Old South Street and Pleasant Street. That's the main access point to the parking garage. Um, additional work included new granite curbing, new concrete sidewalks, improved handicap ramps, new mid-block crosswalk by the Armory Street parking lot and drainage improvements. Um, that has been um, most substantially completed, but there will be more work um, uh, to be done on that. Fulton Avenue. Uh, the pavement was reclaimed uh, between Pleasant Street and Conn Street. Um, any remaining punch list will be done in the spring. Wright Avenue, the pavement was reclaimed uh, between Pleasant and Conn's. Um, additional work included installation of a new granite curbing, a new grass tree belt on both sides, intersection geometry improvements uh, with con concrete sidewalks at Pleasant Street, uh, crosswalk improvements and drainage improvements. Uh, this, the paving's complete. There may be some punch list items for the spring. Uh, Cook Avenue was milled and paved between Hatfield and Bridge Road. Um, uh, additional work included replacing a section of the drain line. So th all of these projects, Pleasant, Hampton, Fulton, Wright, and Cook, were about 1.1 million um, in paving. So as we look ahead to uh, the big projects we hope to tackle in uh, next year's uh, construction season, um, obviously, Burt's Pit Road is, a, um, is one of the projects that we've already done some of the design and survey work as well as the um, drainage improvements, uh, principally um, replacing uh, culverts. So Burt's Pit Road, it's about 1.72 miles uh, from Forest Glen Drive to Clemens Street. That will all be uh, reconstructed. The scope of work includes reclaiming the pavement, new curbing, culvert rehabilitation, and drainage improvements. We're hoping this will go out to bid on December 12th. Um, anticipated construction costs, including culvert re rehabilitation, are likely to be in, in excess of $2 million. Um, we're actually going to begin work on the culvert construction over the winter, um, so hopefully so that these we can go out to bid and, and get the construction started early in the spring. Uh, the other uh, road and, and the sort of th three different roads that we're going to try to work on um, uh, are long and uh, f carry a lot of traffic. Um, and in a couple of cases, uh, last winter uh, suffered really severe deterioration. Um, Glendale Road, uh, which is about a uh, little less than a mile uh, between West Hampton Road and the East Hampton Town Line will be reconstructed. Um, the scope of work includes reclaiming the pavement, new curbing, drainage improvements. We don't have a price on that. That's something that we'll be um, having to do additional design before that goes out to bid. Bridge Road uh, between Juniper Street and Hatfield Street. Um, again, about a 1.6 miles of roadway. And you know, Bridge Road carries about 8,000 cars a day. It's one of probably one of our busiest uh, because it's sort of a commuter route for the hill towns as well. Um, that is going to include a mill and overlay, drainage improvements, improved handicap ramps, and installation of new curbing. Um, and then the other major of the sort of the big four that we hope to try to get accomplished is Spring Street, um, which some of you, if you any of you who have traveled that or were there last um, last winter. Um, <laughs> no problem. Uh, I thought that was Siri or something. Uh, um, Spring Street, which is about a little over a mile, almost 1.2 miles from Florence Road to Meadow Street, uh, as well as Colonel LaValle Lane to Dimmick Street, will be reconstructed. This is going to include reclaiming the pavement, designing and installing drainage improvements, and installing uh, new curbing. Um, so those are kind of the four big roadways that we are going to try to get addressed. And again, Spring Street uh, pretty much, um, there may be, uh, there may be actually less pavement than there is gravel at the end, at least at the end of last winter. It, it really, <coughs> far, it sort of blew up during the, the, the se severe winter that we had. Um, so that was one that needed to be urgently, uh, 
brought to the fore in terms of getting it repaired. We spent a lot of time and a lot of money, um, not only on bridge, uh, on, well, so partially on Bridge Road, but certainly on Spring Street and certainly on Glendale Road, trying to repair those roads throughout the winter and into the spring. Um, we also are hoping, again, depending on how the bids come in for all of these projects, uh, to be able to, to uh, obviously we'll be doing crack sealing as well. We do that every year to do continuous maintenance. Um, and we also potentially can look at some additional streets depending again on how the bids come back. The other um, wild card is chapter 90 um, uh, because chapter 90 has sort of been level funded or it's been funded at the same level $200 million every year which nets Northampton about $1 million. Um, we don't know if there be, we've obviously been lobbying for increases in chapter 90, but to the extent we got more chapter 90 money, that would also free up additional <coughs> funds. Um, so if you look at the chart, just because I, I think it's important to note, um, you see where we were up to FY uh, 2015, um, and sort of two, two important things happen. Not only the beginning of the green, which is the funding from the city, um, the other thing that can't be underestimated is uh, stormwater utility, um, because stormwater utility gets uh, used in many cases in, in conjunction with paving projects. A lot of the drainage work that we did on Hinckley Street, the culvert work, all the other work that we do um, gets folded into uh, these larger projects. So you can see we go along, we go along. Interestingly, the reason why 2015 spiked up uh, that was actually um, the, the year that they actually released some additional uh, Chapter 90 monies. Um, and that was like a brief and shining moment where they actually gave us an extra, uh, um, I would say it was like 50, an extra 50 million or something like that that year. So there was a spike, but then they went back to the $200 million a year. Um, but you can basically see, uh, and again, the 2020 is just estimated at this point. It, it would include this 2.5 million, and it includes estimated uh, projects that we um, are working on as part of the capital improvement program, and it's an estimate based on what we think Chapter 90 will be, but we won't actually know that until uh, the governor authorizes it. So that's sort of the background on why we are seeking this borrowing authorization now and why we are seeking it this early in the process, primarily because we want to get out to bid on Burt's Pit Road. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Dwight. <coughs> I've also noticed the, the purple segment, which is the sidewalks, mm -hmm. which in each, uh, each succeeding year, pretty much, well, in the last few years anyway, in the, projected, in the new projected budget, is that sidewalks that are tied in with each road project or are they also sometimes a combination sometimes it's repairs other times it's um we we bundle it with other with paving projects again if we don't have enough funding um to be you know in chapter 90 um we will use that sidewalk money but it's principally for repairs and that's just you know that's money that we we've added into the capital program every year just for sidewalks, just so we know that we've got something dedicated to sidewalk repair. But sometimes it's part of larger projects, other times it's, it's, um, it's standalone work that we do. Okay. Um, Councilor Bidwell. Um, first, I, I just like to say <coughs> how happy I am to see this. Uh, I think it's, the, you've obviously been hearing, we all been hearing, isn't there a way we can accelerate even even more than we have in recent years our, our, our paving plan? So I think it's very responsive to that, and uh, I, I appreciate it very much. And I also, the, just the reminder of what projects like Hinckley and Audubon really cost. It, it helps us all to explain um, how surprisingly little sometimes can be done in relation to the overall need when critical projects soak up that much of our of our capacity, so just being reminded of that is very helpful. And also, uh, what strikes me on, on this graph is is the importance, as, as you indicated, of, of stormwater enterprise fund dollars as they've been kicking in. And when folks ask about what, what where, where, where do these dollars really go, this is this is again really really helpful to see what an important piece of the whole puzzle it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously we use them, you know, for work on the levees and we use them for work on the stormwater systems, but a big part of it, there's an opportunity. 
One of the reasons why roads like Burt's Pit Road fall apart and Spring Street fall apart is because of inadequate drainage. Yep. You know, these roads were built years ago before subdivisions, before Emerson Ways, before all the different you know, Cardinal Ways and other subdivisions were built. Um, and as you have more development, you have uh, more impervious surface and less places for the water to go. And so these roads, so we have to, in many cases, and also, you know, the storm, rate of storms has increased significantly as well, the storm events. So, you know, Hinkley Street was a major upgrade. Um, you know, Hinkley Street kind of sits on this whole sort of terraced area and the Mill River's there um, and water comes down and, you know, down all these other uh, connecting streets. So. Um, the infrastructure that we built for Hinkley Street, including the out, the properly sized outflow to the to the Mill River, um, you know, was significant. It wasn't just you know, yes, we were paving a, a re residential street, but it was all the other infrastructure uh, that we had to do as part of it as well. So definitely, the the stormwater utility allows our paving dollars to go farther because otherwise we're spending asphalt money on stuff underground. Um, and not the stuff, not actually paving road miles. Um, so. And <coughs> Councilor Barch. Yes, um, Mayor, I want to thank you very, very much for the presentation that you've done tonight. I think that it was very, very valuable. And I am going to support, especially Pertsfoot Road. We have Councilor Gina Lestera, who her and I both in Ward 4 and Ward 6 have to deal with Pertzbet Road. It has become so deplorable that for, I don't know how many years I have called in potholes, potholes and potholes, and this is needed. And another question I have, Mayor, with Pertzbet Road, we would be looking at also putting in all brand new stormwater drains. That's correct, and in some cases, culverts. Uh, there's several culverts along Burt's Pit Road uh, where we have stream crossing. So we had to do a lot of the permitting and other stuff related to that, um, and so that work will be done over the winter time. But there will also be upgrades to storm drains as well. But you know, culverts are part of our stormwater infrastructure. You know, they're kind of our our rural stormwater infrastructure. Um, they're not the you know. Yes, downtown we have these giant, you know, storm drains. Um, but out in um, our more rural areas, we also have stormwater infrastructure. That's culverts, it's swales, it's all these things that we have to maintain um, to be able to keep water uh, flowing properly and off of and away from our roadways. Now, I heard you mention Glendale Road and a couple of other roads. When are you looking at those roads? So. Um, you know, the Burt's Pit one, because we've been, we've been working on all the engineering and design work right. and survey work last year, that one's really ready to go out to bid. So we want to get that out to bid. Yeah. Um, the other ones, we're continuing to finish up the um, engineering work on them, and we hope to go out later this spring uh, to bid on those. So For Glendale Road and that? Yes, yes. Those three, the Glendale Spring and uh, Bridge Road. Because right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight houses that are flooded all the time. Their driveways are being destroyed. They're a mess out there. And I appreciate hearing this presentation. Thank you. Yes, and I believe, I think East Hampton and South Hampton sort of paved their side of Burt's Pit Road. So yeah. it's become even more glaring <laughs> uh, in terms of how bad Glendale is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Councilor Nash, did you have uh, No, but. Oh, Councilor Klein then. Councilor, no, I was scratching my best for <laughs> 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 I, um, I can, I I'll have I can do a mind later. reading here, but go ahead. <laughs> mind reading? Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I'm not going where you think, okay, I'm, okay. Where, where you think I'm going. Um, uh, so it sounds like you preempted the, um, the DPW director's report that we usually get, the pavement report. Is that right. true? Is that still coming out? No, I didn't preempt it. Still I mean, coming out? Yeah, we'll still, get a, we'll still get a memo, but we wanted to really, uh, we wanted to bring this order forward now. Um, and the DPW director agreed and supports it because she wants to get it out to bid, specifically Burt's Pit Road out to bid. 
Is well. there anything else, though, that will be in that report? Yes. Do you foresee other yes. projects? We, we foresee other projects. And like, I, you know, every year when you go through the pavement memo, there's usually the big, you know, big reconstruction projects. Then there's usually another list of streets where we're doing crack sealing or where we may be doing other uh, spot repairs. <coughs> and again, depending on the bidding environment and how much funding, um, you know, what the bids come in at, um, and also Chapter 90, um, there may be additional uh, funding that then we can attempt to try to reallocate them. But we didn't want to wait, um, particularly on Burt's Pit Road, because we know that's going to be an extensive project. And if you wait and you end up getting sometimes higher pricing, and then inevitably it becomes a two-season project. So that that's actually... Um, I have kind of a follow-up question about Burt's Pit because I believe it was on last year's yes, it was. report. Yes, it was. Yes. So we're we're now kind of moving it forward to this year, and funding from this year is going to a project that was on last year's report. It was supposedly going to be funded then. I know that Audubon Road also spanned two years yes. as yep. well. So it just makes me wonder how much we're going to end up kind of pushing forward on. The list to yeah, it's next hard. Year it's hard well. to give you. It's hard to you know. This is what we appropriated in all those years. So I just want to be clear. That's what we appropriated in all those years or authorized in the budget. But but some projects, you know, like Hinkley, um, took three years to get finished. And and so, um, but the funding, you know, is still you know, it's not fiscal year specific. It's project specific. And so. There's often funds that then get carried forward and get applied to another project. So it's not it's not as easy to represent <coughs> it that way, just because of the nature of the construction process. But as you know, what ends up happening is constituents get very excited yes. because they see themselves on this report, and then you know it ends up being the following year. And yeah. so there's some. It can be, but uh, in, in most cases, if they're on the pavement yeah. memo, it's going to happen or work. You know, we, we generally, are, like with Burt's Pit, we talk about how we're going to begin survey work or we're going to begin, you know, like we didn't say we were going to do it last year. We said we're going to begin the design and survey work. Um, and then there are sometimes just issues that happen. Uh, there might be glitches that arise or, or um, permitting issues that arise um, that may delay it, and then we normally tell people about that. But um, so generally speaking, the four streets that I talked about, again, barring some um, unforeseen issue or, or pricing, those are the ones we are sort of focused on. But we do have plans for more crack sealing and additional um, additional paving. But we, we don't feel confident enough in trying to project that until we have a little bit clearer picture of um, both the bids for this massive Burt's Pit Road project, as well as what Chapter 90 might come in at. And one last um, question. The, um, again, the purple section that um, is about sidewalks, yes. is that, how well does it correspond with that sidewalk um, analysis <coughs> that was done yeah. the year before last year? Yeah, thing? that's something that we really wanted um, uh, start addressing in the capital, you know, going through that and working on some of the side, some of the high priority sidewalks. Some of them get addressed by virtue of, you know, some of the main roads that we're working on. But that is definitely funding that we want to begin to use and look at for those priority sidewalks that need addressing, um, for sure. Um, but but certainly, you know, some of the streets we've done this year where we've added sidewalks where there weren't sidewalks before, or in some cases we just make ADA upgrades to sidewalks. <coughs> um, you know, Councilor, last year we did Ryan Road. We paved Ryan Road, but we actually did ADA um, sidewalk ramps at every intersection as part of that, and we used some sidewalk money for that. Um, so we're definitely trying to <coughs> prioritize those. Um, along with all the other big priorities we're working on. Mm -hmm. Councilor Scare, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Um, I agree with Councilor Lamont that this is excellent news for Burt's Pit and for these streets. And I, I dream of the day when South Street is, is on this list, uh, even though I recognize that it's not nearly in the condition that some of these roads <coughs> are, um, but it's the one that I hear about the most. But I just wanted to ask you about- Traffic um, calming. <laughs> I've tried to argue that. I live on South Street, so <laughs> I can assure you South Street is a dream compared to Spring Street I and Burt's Pit <laughs> Road. I know that, and I <coughs> I, uh, I, tried to express that, too. Um, so the pothole, I see that 
the general fund pothole section, it looks like that's also about double what it was last year, although I don't think you highlighted it. It's a much smaller amount, obviously. But is that also, is this sort of a comprehensive, <coughs> as, as Councillor Klein was saying about the sidewalks, is this also like you're, we're just trying to address everything as robustly as we can? It's also, you know, um, <coughs> there was a bumper crop of potholes the last couple yeah. of years, so we've had to allocate more resources to it. So yeah, we we put we allocate money. <coughs> There's always money in the budget for regular like road. You know, we don't put um, capital money for pothole repair, um, but we thought it was important to capture that in here because mm -hmm. it's it's part of the overall program. Um, but yeah, we definitely a couple of <coughs> years ago, I think it was in. I think it was like the 14 or 15 budget, we increased how much we were putting into maintenance and that was primarily for potholes. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's that, that I didn't mention, but um, it's the color, maybe I can't see it on this one. Um, it is bridges, which mm -hmm. of course is a rare thing, but you'll see Clement Street Bridge, we did, um, we don't typically do a lot of bridges, but, but Clement Street Bridge was a project we've been working on the last couple of years. Um, and so you see the re that reflected on here. It's not every year, thankfully, um, and hopefully we won't be having to do Clement Street for another 20 or 25 years. But, um, but so bridges is another part of our roadway infrastructure. So that's also, we tried <coughs> to capture everything that had to do with um, roadway repair, but really the big one to focus on is green because um, that's the one that's grown the most. I mean, it didn't exist really prior to 2015. Uh, um, we did do some general fund drainage uh, work um, here and there, uh, like back in 2012 and a little bit in 2010, but it wasn't really until we got the stormwater utility up and running that we were really able to integrate it into our um, overall approach to how we fix roadways and the underlying utilities. Councilor Barge, did you have another question? Nope, I'm almost done. Councilor Nash, is this an affliction or this a is, question? No, this is really the, <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is a terrific bump here, and um, what about next year? Are we? Is this a trend? Is this, or is, or is this a one year? I'm just, you know. Every year we we reassess. Obviously, um, this year I think um, we're, we we wanted to stretch a little bit because we have these <coughs> roadways, um, big roadways that are in really difficult shape. Um, and so, and, and we needed to get Burt's Pit done, but then, as I said, we had Spring Street literally, you know, blow up last year, uh, and that had not been one that was on our, like, immediate radar. Um, <coughs> and then we had um, Glendale Road as well, uh, similar problem last year. I mean, we, I, I don't have the tonnage, but we put so much asphalt down, um, patching and repairing that uh, last year. Um, so, and then, um, and then Bridge Road, really, there's some seriously bad sections of Bridge Road. Um, and again, that's a road that carries a lot of traffic, high volume traffic. So this is, you know, it's over five miles of roadway. Um, and there are roads that carry a lot of traffic to multiple wards in the city and in and out of the community. So, um, so uh, I, am, I, I can't predict whether we can maintain that or whether it'll continue to rise. Um, but we're stretching to make this fit within an, our, our projections <coughs> this year because we want to um, because we want to address these serious roads. Hopefully, I mean, it would be nice if Chapter 90 went up, um, if if the extra hundred million that municipalities have been lobbying for um, every year, because uh, you know, right now at 200 million, you know, we receive about a million dollars based on the formula. So if it were increased to 300 million, that would be an extra probably half million roughly that we'd get, um, which again, you heard the roadways that I talked about before, that could be, you know, that could do a roadway, that could do a day avenue or, or something like that. So, um, so uh, it's, it, it shouldn't just be the, uh, the city, I think I'm hoping that our gas tax dollars will be sent back to us um, so that we can, you know, be able to use those dollars as well to make the repairs. It would have been nice if the fair share amendment had been passed because half of that, <coughs> uh, half of that new uh, funding uh, on the tax on millionaires would go to roadway repairs. Uh, so that would have been a possible source. Councilor so. Klein. Um, oh, well, I just had a follow up. So um, the, well, as the chair of the TPC, you get to learn lots of stuff. And that um, 
that by fixing these roads right here, w we'll get our pothole crew back because much of last winter mm -hmm. they spent their time out on Burt's Pits and Glendale and Spring Street patching things up and these are major conduits in the city and they have to keep going. So um, that's how the priorities were set. No doubt um, about it. The, 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 the one street, and it's the chair of the TPC that I hear about is North Farms Road. And I, <coughs> my understanding that um, it's up near the top and I'm sure that I'm gonna get a few emails um, as other counselors will. Um, and my request would be this, is that they're asking for traffic calming, that possibly uh, that the, the, the study and the planning process might be able to begin on that road so that that discussion can happen so people have a sense that something is imminent in the future. That's my request. Okay. <coughs> um, and as Councillor Klein knows, I've had lots of conversations with North Farms Road residents. I have had a big, had a big meeting with them um, and we had a great com robust conversation about the condition of that road. Um, and again, it is one of our roads that's high on our list in terms of wanting to address. Um, the difficulty was uh, what happened with Spring Street um, uh, really made it, we, we, needed, we needed to address that one. So um, had that not happened, we may have been, it may have been a different list that we were talking about. But um, so again, I don't, I can't make any commitments. I'm not gonna make any commitments, um, uh, but where we are always reevaluating the list. It's always a fluid list, and that's one of the reasons why we don't like to say we're gonna do this road, this road, this road, you know, three or four years out in advance, because then something like what happened on Spring Street happens, and then we have a set of angry people who, you know, we were we promised we would do their street. And so we really wanna uh, do this using the data that we have, you know, on the ground, and um, so. But your your point is well taken, and um, we can discuss that. Thank you. Councilor Klein. Well, I paid Councilor Nash to bring I was going to say. <laughs> so I didn't have to bring it up myself. Um, so I'm just going to take this opportunity, because we're talking about um, pavement, to make a suggestion about the pavement memo that um, the DPW director will write soon. Um, if it would be possible to include more rationale, more information about the decision making, it would go a long way to answering the questions mm -hmm. that come in from residents of okay. the city, um, including information <coughs> like how many trips are estimated um, to be, you know, go, coming and going, um, what the average speeds are, any of that kind of information that's been collected from any of the the TPC's work or you know the the traffic engineers work that would that would be very helpful to just make it a more robust report that includes that kind of information. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to say, I'm just kind of thinking um, out loud here. I I know that a lot of the issues that we have with our roads comes from this deferred maintenance issue that we talk about all the time. But one of the things that struck me is that. It also has to do with climate change because we're seeing, you know, earlier winters we're seeing the cold and then the hot and the cold and the hot that creates the cracks and the potholes and and I'm wondering, um, I don't remember in discussions in the Energy and Sustainability Commission when we talked about the resiliency plan that um, that the the planning office is working on, but is there any way in which this could be included in? kind of forecasting ideas around resiliency so that monies could come from new sources that would address the condition of roads because they're being affected by climate change? Well, stormwater infrastructure is definitely a huge part of the resiliency discussion, <coughs> and DPW has been at the table, and we've actually, part of it is looking at our, you know, some of the projects around the levees and the flood control systems and Frankly, even those spillway projects up at our up at our reservoirs um, are are a part of updating um, some of our infrastructure to account for that. There's also been a major push to do more green infrastructure um, as we build uh, roadways. Um, we did a lot of it. We did it on Con Street, where we did um, swales, bioswales. Um, on Pleasant Street, we built rain gardens as part of the infrastructure. You 
it looks like landscaping, but it's actually a functioning uh, rain garden as part of the drainage. And we did receive, um, uh, as part of the state's resiliency um, municipal vulnerability uh, program, MVP, uh, we received a $400,000 grant. And part of the work that um, uh, the, the planning department is doing in conjunction with <coughs> resiliency uh, planning is sort of a corollary to uh, planning how to how to utilize those funds for green infrastructure because that's really you know one key way that we can um, we can try to adapt to climate change again even just the work we're doing uh, planting trees all around the city you know trees are a major um, absorber of stormwater and and so. Uh, the fact that that's part of the reason why we're trying to rebuild our tree canopy and you're seeing all the replanting of trees. So trees, looking at more green technologies, permeable uh, technologies. Um, if you've been up to the, uh, it's interesting, the, the um, Conway School up at, the, up at Village Hill, which just relocated there, they built their entire driveway <coughs> out of permeable pavement. And, and so they're sort of doing it as an experiment. It's sort of odd, it kind of looks, it sort of looks like almost like netting or something. I mean, and they actually have to clean it, or they have to kind of they have to clean clear it. it. Yeah, they have to sort of blow it out because it's literally like a like a drain, but it's pavement. So anyway, there's those kinds of technologies, but definitely stormwater and how we construct our infrastructure is a big part of it. And DPW has been part of those discussions. So I'm aware of all the stormwater flood control pieces okay. that have to do with the resiliency and climate change kind of addressing climate change issues, but I'm thinking beyond that piece to the, you know, fluctuating, te wildly fluctuating temperatures and just other phenomena that are contributing <coughs> to the, the de degradation mm -hmm. of the roads. Mm -hmm. So um, it just might be useful to work with the planning department, I think, to think about the ways we can kind of define that degradation of the roads with regard to climate change to kind of access other means of funding and so forth. Okay. Just trying to think creatively about how we can bring more money <coughs> to this issue and clearly climate change is affecting um, the ways in which our, our infrastructure is crumbling. No doubt about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dwight. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, doesn't the Mass DOT bear some responsibility for uh, Bridge Road in that it's a designated bypass and that they in fact in fact, they weighed in rather heavily, for instance, on the traffic signalization and the, and the roundabout on the other end. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, that is not a, um, I should say, a, another big project that we're working on um, that's part of that same roadway is Damon Road. Right. Um, and so Damon Road is a major reconstruction and repair project that's on the, the state's it's third list. 30 so uh, years, yeah. yeah. But it's actually yeah. now happening. <laughs> so the city is actually working on the design and working on some of the land um, acquisition that's, as we speak, that's part of that. And we're hoping that that one's going to move forward. So, you know, that's a big part of that. I mean, uh, they would say, well, you're, you can use Chapter 90 monies for it. Um, we were able to make, I think, a stronger case why they should pay for Damon Road um, because it literally is the north-south interchange right. between the <coughs> northbound and the southbound exit. Um, so they are paying for that project. Um, and obviously they paid for the roundabout at Con Street and they've paid for other major intersection projects. But we, there's a limited number of those that we can go after. Um, I, so, it, so it just seems to me, I mean, Bridge Road, as you said, it, it's principal traffic, it's commuter yeah. traffic to the yeah. hill towns. It's a bypass from downtown. No doubt about it doesn't it. necessarily, uh, except it, it serves the neighborhoods, but by and large, the the major users and stressors on that road system are uh, surrounding communities. That they've True, shown. and you know, South Street could make the same case for East Hampton, <coughs> you know, East Hampton traffic and five and ten for Hatfield traffic. So it's I, get, I hear what you're saying, but at the end of the day, and unless they make the pot bigger, you know, of money. That's really what has to happen. Okay. Um, and you may have heard the <coughs> citing news that based on, you know, a formula and revenue projections, the income tax rate is scheduled to go down in Massachusetts yes. um, um, automatically. So we're probably going to have less revenue, not more revenue. Obviously, that's a little bit separate from the gas tax, but in terms of needing leadership in terms of being willing to raise more revenue, we 
projects. That's what we really need. It's, it's deferring uh, the state's obligations back to the communities mm -hmm. and with limited resources. <coughs> so any other questions on this order? Or are we ready? Hearing none, then. All in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 <coughs> And that's the end of our agenda. So if there's no new business, a motion to adjourn. Charlie, can you, can you do the minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, we did. Wow. Oh. Carry on. <laughs> Move to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Oh, darn, did I miss my opportunity to say I also support paving the roads? <laughs> <laughs> um, we can have more discussion on this. So let's see, we have a number of financial orders that you just heard about. Uh, one is 18207, the order to appropriate free cash to stabilization and capital stabilization. Move to second. May and second, any discussion on this? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That's approved in first reading. Next is 18208, in order to appropriate enterprise fund retained earnings to various capital projects. Move to approve. Made in second. Any discussion? Roll call. <coughs> yes. 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 Okay. That's approved in first reading two. Next, 18209, in order to appropriate free cash to North Dam Public Schools McKinney Vento transportation reimbursement. Move to approve. It's made and seconded by? Second. Councilor Dwight, any discussion? Roll call. Councilor Bard. Yes. Councilor Bard. Yes. 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 That's approved in first reading. Next, 182210, uh, in order to appropriate free cash for Northam Public Schools for the circuit breaker reimbursement. Second. second. And second. And any discussion from the council on this? Roll call. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Lavar. Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 18211, in order to appropriate host committee fee to health department for emergency preparedness activities. Move to approve. To approve. And second, any discussion on this financial order? Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Lavar. Yes. Councilor Lindsay. Yes. Councilor Mayer. Yes. yes. Reading now 18210 in order to borrow 2.5 million dollars for paving. Motion to approve. Move to approve. Made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Mayor. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Point of order. Um, did the mayor want a second reading on that, given the desire to? Uh, it's not required. Okay. Um, you know, we're going to go. We're going to go out the bid on December twelfth, and then there's you know like ten or thirty days. Uh, you don't need a second reading to go ahead. We don't need one. But okay. Yeah. Okay. Finance Just checking. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Eighteen two o three is next. An order <coughs> to uh, authorize the payment of a prior year bill. This is uh, on Move second. To Second, uh, Councilor Flores and seconded by Second. Councilor Shara. Great. Any <laughs> discussion on this? Councilor Mayer. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Lavar. 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 Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. That is approved on second reading. Next is 18140. In order to uh, a relative to the North End Housing Authority, move to approve. Made and seconded by Councilor Shara. This is as amended, approved on first reading. Any further discussion today? Okay. Uh, then I'd ask for a roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. 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 Yes.
There are two ordinances set for referral. Although I understand that the mayor's office may wish them <coughs> not to be referred. Is that correct? This is for the. Um, we have uh, bicycles. Yes, we're asking to withdraw that ordinance. Okay. Yes, but like the other one is good. Uh, accessory strike. Yes, that one can be uh, referred. I'd like to. Okay. Refer, I'd like to withdraw that one. Certainly. Thank Some you very much. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so 18.204, this is an ordinance to amend the definition of, ex of an accessory structure. Motion to refer this to legislative matters. Yes. Second. Council, um, can I just weigh in with the <coughs> committee real quick? Of course. Um, <coughs> it's, it, it could go to community resources, but it's a fairly minor change. So I just want to uh, get your approval for us to send it straight to our committee. Sure. Um, if you so, so basically, we have two definitions in our zoning. One is for accessory structures, and one is for accessory dwellings. Um, and the situation that has developed that is concerns the building commissioner that um, many people build accessory structures, but then they slowly morph into accessory dwellings. Um, <laughs> um, and so the building commissioner would like to have a clearer clarification of that, um, principally by adding, you know, yeah. if you're building your painting or, you know, woodworking shed that it doesn't need a jacuzzi tub and shower in it. You know, if you start putting plumbing and other things, that it actually then becomes a dwelling and needs to be subject to more rigorous inspection. So that's really what the change is about. Um, so that's what this technical correction is for, to better define the difference between accessory dwelling and the accessory structure. Very helpful. Mm. I would certainly be comfortable with it just going to legislative affairs given that explanation. Same here. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pending to negotiate over here. Right, so I think we had that. No, I'm just saying this bold move one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, this is on the lines of the transportation and parking commission. Yeah. It could. But it would it could. Depends on what you put in the structure. There you go. So this is seconded by <coughs> Councillor Klein. Any discussion on the referral? Hearing none, all those in favor of the referral say aye. 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 Abstention, so it's referred. Great. Uh, and without objection, we are uh, not taking up 18205 about bicycle sharing uh, this evening. We have uh, five ordinances. They are all on second reading. And uh, they are the following. Uh, 18173, an ordinance to amend chapter 31236 of the code. Um, this is the proposal to increase the hourly rate in the EJ Gare garage. Um, motion on this, please. Move to approve. <coughs> I'm sucks. Oh, gonna, I was actually going to request that the council continue, um, cons postpone consideration of this until its next meeting on December 20th. Um, How come? Uh, I think, as I said to you, that I had hoped not to uh, make this change during the middle of December, during the middle of the holiday season, that we wanted to put it off until January, until after. Um, so, I mean, you can always enact it and we'll just wait to do it, but I, I figured if there's, unless there's a rush to vote on it tonight, putting it off until the 20th would then line it up better for... You have 10 days to... 10 days, so it would yeah. be the 30th, and then we could get the work done right after the new year. Any objection from the council to waiting? No. Okay. So, Councilor Barge, we'll take your motion as a motion to continue, perhaps, as opposed we'll continue. to... Continue. Seconded by... We'll second by. Councilor Dwight. Any discussion on continuance? and we'll make a note to bring it up uh, two weeks from today, so thank you. Um, hearing no discussion, all those in favor of continuing, please say aye. 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 Those any abstentions? Mm. Excellent. Uh, next is 18.174, an ordinance to amend chapter 350-12.3. Uh, this is about significant trees as discussed at our last meeting. Move to approve. In seconded. Any discussion on second reading? Again, I think it's a significant improvement. Uh, so hearing no discussion, I'll ask for a roll call. Yes. 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 On second, reading, next is 18179, an ordinance to amend Chapter 350-11.5b2, site plan submittal requirements. Move to approve. Uh, second. Second is okay. amended. And, um, right, so this was passed on first reading and we tinkered with it a little bit at that time. Any further discussion tonight? Um, then a roll call on this ordinance, please. Councilor Biswell. 
Yes. 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 On second reading, next is 18184, an ordinance to amend Chapter 5 of the Code of Ordinances by adding Section 5 7. This is about designating certain positions as. Um, I, th I assume this means special municipal employees. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Motion on this. Second. 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 Um, good. And this is on second reading. Any further discussion on second reading tonight? Okay. This is pretty common sense. Uh, roll call. Councillor Carney. Yes. 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 That is approved as well. And finally, 18196, an ordinance relative to parking on okay, Wilder please. Place. Uh, move second reading, please. Second. Okay. And second. Any discussion on second reading? Then roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Any new business this evening? <coughs> Your motion to adjourn. Made in second. It was made by Councillor Dwight. Is that right? Okay. Any opposed to adjournment? Not all of the favor. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.